Well, today I wanted to talk about uh, motors. I know I did a video on motors before, and just a quick review, we said that the motor basically is going to have just a few parts. It's going to have the casing, it's going to have the bearings, it's going to have the rotor, and it's going to have the windings. The casing, nothing can go wrong with that because it's just the casing. It can get dirty, which is going to allow the heat to stay in there. It's not going to dissipate the heat. It won't get rid of the heat, so the casing should be kept clean. Then uh, the rotor. The rotor is a piece of metal. It's a hunk of metal that nothing can really go wrong with it, but it is very, very useful in a motor. We talked about the bearings. We said the bearings can start to go bad, and you need to lubricate the bearings. If the bearings start, if they're not lubricated, they're going to slow the motor down, increasing your amperage, overheating the motor, your motor burns up. So your bearings could cause the motor to go bad. But today, what I wanted to talk about was actually the windings in the motor. The windings, well, in a motor, we're going to have the casing like this, and inside the casing, you're going to have a winding like this, you're going to have a winding like this, and another winding like that. So we basically have one, two, three windings on the motor like this. And what happens in the motor is the magnetic field that is being generated at the generator is going to sit here and is going to rotate like this. It's going to rotate. As it rotates, what it's doing, it is inducing a magnetic field on the rotor in making that rotor rotate. That's why the motors rotate because that magnetic field is actually rotating in the windings like this. Now, I'm just doing it like this just to show you basically how that's set up. But in reality, what has happened is they have the windings like this, then they have the windings like this, and then you might have another winding like this. So you have three sets of windings. And if you notice, they're all connected together right at the center. That's why we only have one, two, three connections on the motor. And this is where you're going to want to check your voltage or you want to check your, your amperage or your resistance, depending on what it is that you're trying to do. So now on here, when we hook up our meter to this, what we're going to do is we're going to check the resistance here. And let's say this is a two horsepower motor, let's say 230 volts, and it's supposed to draw, I mean, it's supposed to have, let's say, three ohms. Is going to have three ohms like this. What you're doing is you're checking across this winding and then this winding like this. Or in other words, basically you're checking across this winding here and then let's say this winding like this. So they have joined these two windings together right there. So you're reading one, two windings. When you check the other one, what you're doing is you're checking across here to here and that should also be 3 ohms. If this combination is 3 ohms, then this combination should also be 3 ohms, which means that if you check across here, exactly, this combination should also be 3 ohms. Now, if you have less resistance, then that means you're going to allow more electrons to go through there. When you allow more electrons to go through there, what happens is the amperage is going to go up. And like I've said before, if the amperage goes up, two things increase. One is the strength of the magnetic field, and two, it's going to be the amount of heat, the amount of heat. Now, heat and temperature are two different things. The more heat you have, typically, the higher the temperature is going to be. So again, we have to be careful. And, but I wanted, what I wanted to point out was that the combination of this one and this one should be 3 ohms. The combination of this one and this one should be 3 ohms. The combination of this one and this one should be 3 ohms. So on a three-phase motor, three-phase motor, all your windings should be the same. In other words, L1, L2, and L3. Now, in another video, I will probably talk about this, but on a, on a three-phase motor, what happens is you have your connection box right there, and typically you're going to have one, two, 
three wires coming out. Well, sometimes you have four, five, six wires. Other times you're going to have seven, eight, nine wires coming out. Other times you're going to have 10, 11, and 12 wires coming out. So all of these wires, they're going to be wired in a certain manner to give us this winding, this winding, and this winding. We'll talk about this on another video, but I want you to understand that here I'm saying one, two, and three, because one of these is going to be labeled T1, another one of these is going to be labeled T2, and another one is going to be labeled T3. Those are the ones that you're going to want to go across, T1, T2, and T3. These are the terminals going into the motor. And hopefully somebody has wired this up properly so that now all of these are together and you're only going to have three wires coming out of it. That's going to be T1, T2, and T3 unless this is a nine lead motor and you're wiring it for low voltage and it gets all very confusing and we don't have time for that. But this is basically what you want to check on your three-phase motor. The other thing we want to check is to see if we have a connection between the winding and the casing. That would be very, very bad because if we have a connection between the winding and the casing, that tells me that we have what they call a ground. This motor and all motors should actually have an earth ground. The purpose of the ground is one word and that's safety safety it is only there for safety so if someone comes and they're going to touch this motor they it will not go through ground on them but it will go through ground right here if this ground wire is missing it's going to go through that person and yeah it's not going to be a good experience so again check in three phase motors L, T1, T2, and T3. All of the readings should be the same. You should check to the casing to see if it's grounded. If it's going to the casing, most likely it will have tripped the breaker or blown a fuse. I hope this helps. Keep this in mind. And if you have any suggestions for videos, please let me know. My name is Julio, Aircon Academy. If you would uh, go to my webpage, airconacademy.com, follow me on YouTube. I'll be on Facebook and if subscribe to my channel on YouTube. If you have any suggestions again, let me know. Thank you.